Today in this video, I'm going to talk about bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis is a very common respiratory illness affecting infants less than 2 years old, especially those who are 2 to 6 months old. It can be caused by bacteria or virus, but the most common organism causing bronchiolitis is respiratory syncytial virus. These are some of the risks and protective fi factors for bronchiolitis. The risk factors are preterm infants, especially those who develop bronchopulmonary dysplasia, and also infants with congenital heart disease, low birth weight, neurologic disease that impairs sputum clearance. Whereas for protective factors, those infants that are breastfed will be at a lower risk of getting bronchiolitis, and also parental avoidance of smoking helps as well. For clinical features, Normally, the infant will present with mild coryza, low-grade fever, and coughing. Low-grade fever is important to note as well because this will help to differentiate from pneumonia. When pneumonia, usually there will be high-grade fever, which means more than 38.5 degrees Celsius. For bronchiolitis, on general appearance, we can look whether the infant is having cyanosis or pallor, and also that usually there will be tachypnea, which is fast breathing. On inspection, we can see hyperinflated chest, chest recession, which involves intercostal, subcostal, or suprasternal recession. And also in infants, the signs of respiratory distress would be nasal flaring, expiratory grunting, and also head bobbing. For palpation, there will be reduced chest expansion in bronchiolitis. On percussion, it will be hyperresonant, and there will be loss of cardiac and liver downness as the lung is hyperinflated. Whereas for auscultation, there will be reduced air entry, fine palpitations and ronchi may be heard. This helps to differentiate from pneumonia as well, because in pneumonia, the typical presentation is cause crepitations. For investigation, first we can do full blood count to look at the white cell count level. If it is high, it suggests infection. Second, we can do pulse oximetry to obtain the oxygen saturation also to assess the severity of the bronchiolitis. Third investigation is arterial blood gas to obtain the partial pressure of the oxygen and carbon dioxide. We might see a low partial pressure of oxygen and high partial pressure of carbon dioxide in bronchiolitis, which suggests type 2 respiratory failure in severe cases. And fourth is chest x-ray to look for signs of hyperinflation, like if we can see more than six anterior ribs or more than seven posterior ribs. Also, other signs of hyperinflation are horizontal ribs, flattened diaphragm, increased hyla bronchial markings. Also, for bronchiolitis in the chest x ray, we might be able to see segmental or lobar collapse or consolidation. For management, for general management, we can give oxygen and also maintain the oxygen saturation level more than 93%. Besides that, we have to monitor for signs of impending respiratory failure, like if the infant is unable to maintain satisfactory SpO2 on inspired oxygen more than 40%, or if there is rising partial pressure carbon of carbon dioxide. This means that it is impending respiratory failure. And other management is nutrition and fluid therapy, we can commonly see poor feeding in infants with bronchiolitis. So if they cannot tolerate oral feeding, we can give nasogastric tube feeding. And for medical management, 3% saline solution can be given via nebulizer. How does it help in bronchiolitis? Well, 3% saline solution it is a hypertonic solution. So it will help to absorb water into the bronchus. And when there is more water, it makes the mucus in the bronchus less viscous and it will be easier to expel out the mucus. For antibiotics, it is only given in some cases. It is not routinely given. We only give antibiotics if the infant is having recurrent apnea and circulatory impairment or possible septicemia or they are having acute clinical deterioration, high white cell count and also progressive infiltrative changes on the chest x-ray which suggests bacterial infection. For complication of bronchiolitis, there is the bronchiolitis obliterans, which is a serious complication, but it is rare. It means there is subacute inflammatory process, 
and the small airways, the bronchioles, are replaced by scar tissue, therefore causing reduced lung volume and compliance. Other complications include recurrent apnea and asthma. So how can we prevent this bronchiolitis? There is actually a, a prevention that we can do, which is called the monoclonal antibody of respiratory sensitive virus. It is a vaccine that is injected intramuscularly every month. And it is also called as palivizumab. That's all for this video. Thank you.